All right, all right, all right. Um, let's get caught up. So if I so I updated my art station page. Wait, is my audio working? Yes. So um, now when you go to my art station page, here's everything. Here's the ZBrush. I don't know why it took me years to do this, but here's my ZBrush What's New section, intro to ZBrush, and then 24, 23, all the way back to ZBrush 4R8 in this section. And then in the Real Illusion Character Creator, what I did in a couple live streams ago was basically use face tools to walk through the process of creating this vampire creature. And that's just the face. So I am going to have videos on starting with the vampire creature's head. And you can see it kind of just transitions to uh, just a regular old body, as you can see here. Um, but, you know, now I have uh, a fully sculpted... Let's zoom in here. I basically have a fully sculpted... Let's make my brush size a little smaller here. Cute, there we go. I have a fully sculpted head here. So let's go back up to Subdivision Level 6. So here's my finished head. And it's all poly painted and baked out and in Character Creator. But now I need a body to go with it. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm gonna again, I'm going to have videos on that process. But I'm not going to have videos on the sculpting of that body. Because, you know, it kind of goes outside of the scope of that type of tutorial but I have a live stream here so let's and it's all ZBrush so let's go ahead and give this guy a body befitting his vampire-esque uh, head so and you know what just to kind of get caught up to basically starting character creator just dialed in a basic face go through and just modify that face using face tools you hit the face tools button it sends it over we just sculpt you know kind of a zombie-ish bat nosy emaciated guy uh send the you use that texture from his face to adjust the poly paint go in there and do the cavity masking and we did we even went into like so sculpting some of the uh, expression data in there so again i'm going to have a series on this however this is only the head you can see right here the head kind of transitions to just a normal body so now this is going to be the process of adding a creepy body to our creepy character here so now that we're all caught up Let's talk about that. So, two things. Number one, I already have topology. Uh, I have so I'm on and I'm on subdivision level six. So here is the fully uh, realized kind of gross character here. And then if I drop down to subdivision level one, this is the game res that we're going to be sending over, and it's got all the poly groups on there. And we're just going to kind of start fleshing this body out. So, what kind of uh, would you need to purchase from character to do this? Uh, that if you're just doing the body workflow, it would just be character creator and ZBrush. You know, so if you want to do like this goblin workflow where you do the head and the body, uh, you can just go back and forth, uh, which is go Z, and that's all you need. This one, if you want to do facial expressions, where you know when I when my my brow zoom in when my brow goes up, these little, like a normal map comes in that has you know custom wrinkle maps that you created in ZBrush, um, then you would need a plugin called Face Tools, but uh, or you can just start with the base topology and, you know, like I said, just sculpt the head and the body and just use a body workflow. Uh, and if you're into that, on my YouTube channel here, this is the character creator body pipeline right here. So starting with the body, you can go all the way through, add gear, add accessories, add cloth, um, all the way to using AccuFace to kind of capture your, your face there. So if you want, here is the, let's go all. So here is... If y'all want to dig through some of that stuff, and here is my YouTube playlist page. There's some cool stuff on there, I think. Your mileage may vary. So, we have our body here, and again, we're going to do kind of a creepy... Um, he, he, his head's kind of emaciated, it's kind of gaunt, it's kind of sallow, so we're going to do that. We're also So we're going to give him kind of a thin build, um, but we're also going to kind of play with his anatomy a little bit so you can see while I'm using the standard brush there's like a little rubber band that comes out behind it that is underneath your stroke lazy mouse that's on by default at a radius of one for your standard brush I'm going to tap L occasionally to turn that on and off in fact if I want the lazy radius on I'm probably going to crank it up maybe to you know 13 so it's a nice smooth stroke um, or if I'm just doing just kind of anatomy sculpting I might leave this down to one but like I said just turn off lazy mouse if it kind of gets in the way um, 
I also have some reference in here. So even though I'm, you know, sending this back and forth with either GoZ or Face Tools, I can have other subtools in here. They just, you know, if I'm going to use a body workflow, I'll just GoZ visible and leave these uh, references off. But uh, if I turn this one on, you'll see I have a, it's going to solo mode, let's select it, going to solo mode. I have a skinny uh, character reference in here from 1024. They have morph bodies, so you can morph from like um, an overweight character to an, a skinny character. And then, you know, the in-between normal, you know, they say base body, um, kind of average body. So we're going to use this as reference just to kind of get uh, a skinny look. But then we're also going to modify this to kind of give him kind of bat rib cage anatomy sternum uh, scapulae uh, just for fun so you know i can have both of these coexisting in the same space if i want i can move this guy backwards so i can just say you go back here so while i'm sculpting i have some reference just available to me um, or i can undo that and i can go into doo -doo -doo, transform split screen to one and then whatever i have selected if i just alt tap on the subtool here, or I go in here and select a subtool that will go and swap out the different bodies. So I'm going to be sculpting on this one, and this is going to be my reference. You'll notice I do have colorize turned on, and his verts are all white. If they're not, you can just choose a white color, say color, fill object, and now I have my reference here. And you don't need the full like subdivision level six wrinkle reference if we're just using it for primary and secondary forms. Um, and we'll maybe even get into the scan data part of transferring scan data details to, um, you know, kind of making this guy go. So anyway, uh, we'll get started here. And like I said, we'll start just with kind of getting that skinny anatomy here. So the rib cage going to go down to about here and pretty much like if you kind of have to suck in my gut, but underneath my rib cage and then I feel for the top of my pelvis is a pretty short distance. Um, this one's actually fairly long, but you know, it's maybe three fingers width uh, in there. So that's, that'll kind of dictate, you know, this kind of popping out. Was this just the spine of the scapula, your asis and your pieces um, points here. And then this goes back to your sacrum back here. So again, we're just kind of exaggerating. I mean, we're not really exaggerating. We're just kind of following along here. Uh, we'll dig in the spine attachments and then you're going to see right here you're like your c7 kind of bows out a little bit here and we're just going to well we'll put that in but we'll also we're going to get a little bit creepy with it so i'm going to bow i'm going to do a little a bit of extreme modeling uh, or pushing these forms a little bit more um you also notice when i smooth it really it, it like decimates this out now there is two smooth algorithms you can hold on shift and then let go of shift as you smooth and that'll maintain your volumes but You'll see if I go in here to brush, smooth brush modifiers, mine defaults to weighted smooth mode of one, which is stronger. So you'll see me hold down shift and drop that Z intensity way down when I'm working on um, lower res objects here. So uh, again, uh, if we're gonna be painting and I'm using my clay brush, I am gonna turn off RGB just so I'm not accidentally doing poly painting um, as I'm sculpting here. So we'll go ahead and get that nice spine ridge here. In fact, maybe we'll go in here to our move brush and really kind of pop that out. We'll make kind of an aggressive, um, <laughs> spine popping out there. Um, same thing for this rib cage. You know, we have our basic rib cage here. I'm going to move instead of sculpting. So you can see the geometry kind of dips down here. And I mean, there's two ways I could uh, tackle this. I could just sculpt right across that geometry which probably better is to go in here and modify the geometry so that it, you know, gets that peck shape uh, through here because this is kind of neutral body-ish, I'm guessing. And then uh, for like thinning parts out, you know, he's got pretty thin legs. His uh, great trochanters kind of pop in there, which is nice. I like that. So we'll, we'll take a bit of that here. We'll pop these out. And then, uh, you know, and again, we're going to go extreme-ish. So we're going to take our inflate brush and just hold down alt and we'll kind of deflate along here. Um, oh, that kind of brings up a cool feature. If you go to ZBrush What's, ZBrush What's New, uh, ZBrush 2024, you can click on here. And then if you scroll down past the sizzle stuff, here is the one, there's seven videos here. So you can go and watch them in here or on my YouTube channel in the playlist section, you got this. And there's an anchor brush update, which is right here. And one of those, so if you want, I don't have the sizzle in there, but 
So uh, yeah, let's talk about this a little bit because this is also a way you can go and thin stuff out. So if uh, you know, I have my split screen over here in my custom menu or my custom interface here, I can just turn that off and go into solo mode temporarily. If you want to know more about custom menus and such, that would be under this intro to ZBrush. There's 51 videos in here and in there is a custom interface, custom um, hotkeys and stuff like that. Um, like have you tried a setup with multiple objects on the same subtool using Anchor Brush? No, usually when I'm using Anchor Brush, it's for exactly this, just kind of using the base body. Um, so no. I <laughs> uh, would love to see an update to the split screen so you can work with multiple subtools. Yeah, or, or multiple monitors. There's all sorts of cool stuff you could do if you had, you know, like detachable windows. I agree. Sorry, I'm going to be drinking my iced coffee, which was coffee I made yesterday and put in the fridge. Um, so uh, B for my brush menu, and then A to go to my brushes to start with A. The only one I have in there is Anchor Brush. And then in here we have Inflate, and with the new 2024 Anchor Brush, what I can do if I want to thin something down, um, there's a focal shift uh, value in here. So if I, if I click, I put an anchor here and an anchor here, and then with Inflate, I go through here and I inflate this one down. Um, you know what? This little... This, there's a graphic in here. Let me turn the sound off. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So basically, let me see if I can skip forward here. There's a gradient. You can see in here, here's my first anchor point. Here's my second anchor point. Whichever one you choose, if you're using inflate, for example, everything below that anchor will be 100%. In between those two points will be 0 to 100, and anything above it will be 0%. So, for example, on inflate, I've got my one anchor here, my one anchor here, and as I go through and I have inflate chosen and my focal shift's at 100, um, let me see, inflate here, I can go through... Let's put our second dot there. Um, I can either inflate this direction or I can go through and I can inflate this direction. And again, it's think of a gradient line going through here and everything below this is 100%, zero to 100% in here. So you can see it's slightly getting inflated and then it's inflating a lot uh, or a consistent 100% inflation. However, if we have two anchor points and we switch this focal shift to zero, now that focal shift line is in between. And now when I go in here and inflate, it'll it'll do the inflating in between. So that's another way you can go through and kind of deflate uh, certain areas, even down to fingers, you can click and click and then deflate. And as long as you have that focal shift set to zero, it'll kind of deflate along those fingers. So that's a fun one, right? We'll go through here and we'll do some Nosferatu hands. Um, I want to say Andy Bergholtz. Let's go check out Andy. LTZ um, Nos. Oh, it's all one word. Yeah, I got it right, I think. I think? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was... I guess it's this one, but it's a bust. Um, let me see if I can find the hands. He, I think it was, oh, I'm gonna feel really bad if it wasn't him. Uh, but I have some reference images of some Nosferatu hands and I'm pretty sure he did, um, but I can't seem to find on the internet. But I know where they are because they're on my computer. So if I go to my artists folder and I go to Andy Bergholtz in here, I know I got, so he has um, some good Hulk hands as well. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And somewhere in here is a cool pair of, yeah. So we're gonna double click this and we'll double click this. Oh my God, every time I use XN View, there's a new version. <laughs> I don't know what they're updating every week but uh, they must stay on top of it. So yeah, you can see this really nice um, long tendons and you know the bones kind of sticking through and the veins and stuff. So you know, I'm, I'll, I'll keep this up as probably more inspiration than anything. I don't know how far I'll get, but anyway, uh, anchor brush update, pretty cool. Uh, alternative to that, you can go through here and again, just hop into your inflate brush and you can hold down alt to deflate and then let go of alt uh, and just do an inflate if you'd like. So we can go through here and we can beef up this and then beef down the wrists and then same thing. We can give them some nice thin <laughs> um, 
I guess, long distance runner thighs and then kind of knobby knees here. And then if we want to, we can hold down shift and smooth all this out. Um, any zebra silver week? Maybe uh, motivation because my imagination has gone. I've never really had much of an imagination. So you and me both. Um, so we've got our ribcage dialed in. He's going to be super skinny. So we're going to go ahead and smooth this out and, um, you know, maybe kind of suck this in a little bit, kind of vacuum that in, just kind of uh, maybe stringy. That's what we're going for is gaunt, gallo, stringy. Let's go out of solo mode. Let's go back into our split screen here. And I think we've got our overall forms kind of dialed in. I Like I said, I am going to kind of exaggerate this. So we'll give them kind of a bird-like um, sternum. We'll kind of pop this out again. And again, he's going to be kind of an aggressive kind of look. So we'll kind of, again, pop this out. And then, you know what, maybe we'll even, we'll see how well this plays with his platysma and stuff whenever you do their, the neck tighten. Um, we can kind of move this out as well, kind of really bow out. Actually, let's, that's a good point. Let's go in here to bat skeleton. Um, here's a good one. Yeah, you can see how it's got a really flared out collarbone. And uh, kind of a squat rib cage, but it's really, um, you know, big, I guess. You got to get some good breathing in there if you're flying around and very lightweight bones. Um, and we'll probably exaggerate the scapula as well. We'll kind of make it, and again, make it a little more aggressive, a little more pointy. So we'll enlarge, we'll embiggen this scapula and uh, maybe give them a little bit of a broader shoulder or you know, kind of a muscular shoulder, like he's going to start flapping, although he doesn't have wings, so it's not like he's going to have a membrane here, but we can kind of dial in maybe the beginnings of a membrane. Maybe he's in his early metamorphosis and uh, he's starting to develop little membranes here. So we can kind of maybe exaggerate this in the pec a little bit to kind of give him early flight <laughs> uh, look. And uh, yes, yeah, so we got a little pecs going on here. And he'll have some nice ribs going through here, so we can kind of maybe dial in some of these ribs. And then back here, his serratus anterior. And again, uh, we'll kind of exaggerate these. So um, we'll kind of pull these out a little bit more. Again, looking for aggressive uh, shapes here. And he's not going to have, you know, big... I would assume, you know, big muscular obliques or anything like that. Everything will be emaciated and kind of stringy. So we'll go back. So, so our Damien standard brush, we can kind of carve in. We're starting to run out of resolution here. But, you know, you kind of generally want to get your forms basically dialed in before you go too far. You don't want to, you certainly don't want to start on, we have subject, up to subject level six built in because we did the head first. Because if you're just joining us, we started with face tools. So our head's basically done. We're just making a body for our head. Um, but we don't want to start on subdivision level six. We, we're going to wait. We're going to do It's called delaying gratification. We're not going to start with poor detail. And this is, it's not really, really delaying gratification because this is fun stuff too. Okay. Uh, volume's kind of dialed in. He's skinny. He's uh, aggressively creepy. Um... You know what, we can kind of play around with this too. So he's got, we'll give him a little bit more of a tricep here. We're not going to make him super muscular. And then I'm going to kind of point again, just looking for more aggressive shapes that we can kind of play around with. And I'm going to bow out this arm here, give him a nice sweep through this forearm here. Again, I'm, I'm kind of eyeballing this bat. You can kind of see, not that, you know, the anatomy is going to follow the bone shape necessarily because uh, you know you can have a legs a good example of this 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 leg will go from the great trochanter inwards but then you know when you start putting on the muscles and stuff it'll straighten out but generally speaking uh we'll just kind of follow that so and again we'll play around with this shoulder girdle area i think that's a good opportunity to kind of play around with some bat features so now that we got our volumes dialed in, we'll go up to subdivision level two. Uh, again, our head is maintaining our volumes because there's detail there. Our, the rest of our body is just kind of flat because there's nothing there in subdivision level six. So again, um, we'll kind of poke this out a little bit and we'll kind of dig in and we'll start 
And this, it, it's not like it's going to kind of have an undercut in here. Like the skin's going to kind of stick to it like a wet t-shirt. Um, you know, it's even if you do have a bony rib cage through here, or in this case back here, that kind of bony scapula that we're exaggerating here. Uh, and again, we'll make this really big bird scapula-ish. Um, and you know what? We do want to leave some room for that trapezius. So maybe I'll dial this back just a little bit on that side. So here we got our the big knob or the, the spine of the scapula here. And this is going to go around to your acromion process here. And then that's going to meet up with your clavicle. And again, we're exaggerating that the shoulder girdle here in that crest. So we're going to go, and I keep saying the word aggressive, but it's kind of true. It's aggressively protruding, um, bowing out, you know, that big, um, we'll kind of pull this down and kind of bow this back a little bit here. And then, you know what, let's bring this up too. This will be a good one. Go here in the zygo body. I'm going to go to, oh, so zygobody.com. We're going to go to the little two dots. We're going to take everything out of here. We don't need any guts, but we do want bones and muscle, no skin. And we're going to take a look at the, um, the pec here. So we can shoot, click on the pec and then we can take the muscle slider and slide everything else back. And you can see it'll attach right along. You can't really get a good look. Let's do this again. Can't really get a good look at the top here, but basically about half or a third of the top here, all the way down the sternum. And then on the, what is that, ribs four, five, and six maybe. And then that's gonna flip over underneath here. And then just below the knob of your, the top of your humerus, head of your humerus here. Um, you're going to have about three fingers width of flipped over pec muscle. So we'll kind of look at that as well. And so what that's going to translate to, you're going to have like a little, you can see that little cavity in there. So you can kind of see, okay, that's where the pec kind of comes in. So we're just going to follow that. And then here's that clavicle. And then here's that cavity. So there's your deltoid connecting in here. And then here's your pec um, along the top where it connects to the clavicle. <laughs> and then as we go through here, uh, again, and we can get, you know, get as crazy as you want with the striations and stuff. Just make sure that you're going, you know, origin to insertion, point A to point B um, in a predictable, understandable manner, I suppose. And that'll kind of fold up underneath and then your deltoid down through here. So again, kind of bird-like anatomy, uh, bat-like anatomy, exaggerating, aggressively creepy, um, on the back here, let's take a look at this. And this is, it's honestly been a while for me. So this is <laughs> me getting caught up as well. I feel like you can kind of see here's the deltoid and then it kind of turns into a little sheath, a little tendon, um, attachment to that scapula there. So I'm going to say this is the muscle belly and then it's going to kind of flatten out And here. Oh, we've also got some fun stuff in that shoulder girdle too. So if we dial this back in and we say you you and you here's our uh teres uh major teres minor and infraspinatus i think in that order in here uh so we're going to kind of follow that too and you're going to see this bottom one teres uh what is that minor Major is the bottom one, right? Minor is this little one in here, and then major is this bottom one here. That is going to go underneath your um, tricep. So you can kind of see that in here. That's that's that going underneath. So we're going to kind of follow that here. And then here is our deltoid. Here is our tricep. And then here is our little baby teres minor. And then this is our infraspinatus. I think it's not, not it's a pretty flat muscle. Um, this one's probably the most bubbly of the muscles in there um but again have fun with it so here's our deltoid we'll dial that in a little bit here um i'm using clay brush i may use uh, a little bit of clay tubes which i believe is from magalena brushes which can be found z brush masters if you google z brush masters I, I hope i'm my memory's working correctly 
um, you know, watch these videos here. And I believe in the Magdalena one, there's some brush talk in there. And it's essentially clay tubes, square alpha, stroke modifiers, roll distance set to five, low Z intensity. And I think that's the gist of that brush there. So again, deltoid, happy little deltoids, the three heads of the deltoid. These are the multi-pennate <laughs> muscles along the top, I believe. Um, and then going through here again. So I'm going to kind of use the Damien standard to dig in here. And then we'll kind of tuck this in here. Right in here is, I want to say, Brachialis. I think it can, you know what? This is too much fun. Let's find out. If I dial these back, go to the deeper muscles in here, there's a coracoid process. And then from there, that little guy. Yeah, look at that. Um, that's going to attach that little little finger that comes out of the back uh, or the inside, you know, medical term, <laughs> of your scapula, a little coracoid process. And that's going to go right here. So I guess a little armpit muscle in there. I think that's what that is. And then here's your bicep. For all the anatomists watching, I apologize in advance. So here's this bicep, and then your brachialis somewhere along here, and then your ridge muscles or your, um, oh boy, it's too early in the morning for me to do an anatomy test now. Your extensors along the top here, and then your flexors along the bottom, we'll call them that. So here, some veins and nervous nervous system bundles, I assume. And then you got some big bony landmarks in here. So that's probably the medial epicondyle of the humerus, if I had to guess, right here. And then there's olecranon of the, um, of your humerus. And you know what, this is gonna be, again, we got, we're, we're, we're kind of getting weirdly uh, aggressive with our shapes here. So again, we're gonna kind of pop this out. He's gonna have a very knobby, um, pronounced olecranon. And then again, his lateral, the medial epicondyle, the humerus, would be this bump right here. And then up here, it's going to be kind of hidden underneath this muscle. It's going to be, I think, right in here is where that's going to kind of stick in. Okay, so we got all that. Um, we got some wrist stuff going on in here. We got some hand stuff. And if you ever want to, if like the stuff's getting in the way, we can hold down control shift. Let's go to select lasso. We'll grab the arms here. We'll alt tap our reference, do the same thing. And now we can just kind of get that stuff out of the way. So now we can just kind of focus in on, and these hands are rotated a little bit different, but I think we can get the gist of what we need. Alrighty. So moving right along, let's work our way down the body here. So we got our abs, we got six, six minute abs, seven minute abs. Just remember, was that something about Mary? I feel like it was, I could be wrong. Somebody fact check me. And again, that's gonna be this kind of concave area here. It's not, it's not gonna be an undercut cause you know, you got skin kind of pulling down, but there's your basic, um, Let's dial our muscles back in. I guess I should use the right terms, right? Um, rectus abdominis, not to be confused with your rectus femoris, <laughs> which is further down the leg. So then we got our obliques here, and then obviously very, you know, the external obliques. So we got the rib cage kind of being dialed in right here. through here and then we got these ribs and then just a very thin sheet across here uh, and I think it's speaking of thin sheets you know so we've got our C7 I guess is right about where's my scapula I feel my own right about here here <laughs> it's one of these big knobs um, we'll 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 play it fast and loose here but basically here's the knobs of our spine again being aggressively creepy um, bowing out kind of scoliosis ish uh, esque and then we'll kind of go through here and this is where it's going to start going in to the body because there's going to be spinal erectors that are going to pop out right here and then here's our aggressively bony 
pelvis bones right around here. And then our obliques will kind of dial in right in here. Again, not, not super muscular, just kind of shapes here. And then we've got our, what's that, your sartorius here, the big, yeah. So this big muscle here, or long muscle, I should say. Here's your acis anterior superior iliac spine, I believe, right here. And then you can see right along here, there's going to be a nice dividing line from your sartorius, from your adductors. Adductors, not abductors, right? Oh, no. I'm going to fail the exam. And we'll get a slight curve. Again, not muscular necessarily, but just a slight curve for the leg muscles here and then the hamstrings in the back. And then, again, we've got our dividing line right along here. So here is our sartorius, and that's going to lead to a nice um, curve right here, and then it's going to be a little flatter on the outside. Those are just basic um, kind of gesture lines of the body here just because you have your femur kind of sitting on top of your... Um, tibia and then your fibula is on the outside and that's going to kind of give you a nice flat area out here and then you're going to have a bunch of tendons the sartorius and there's the gracilis kind of and a bunch of stuff just kind of attaching down here so that's going to kind of smooth and round out this inside portion here uh, but then we got some knobby knees so let's go ahead and dial those in and again we're just using the standard brush i think we still have our lazy mouse on we can probably toggle that off with l I guess it has toggled off. It felt a little smoother. And then also along here, here's that, speaking of the tibia, here's the, right along here, you can feel that on your leg. That's just gonna be a big old bone right under your skin. And that's gonna go here. So this this is, you got your higher and then your lower. And we'll go ahead and follow that shape too. We'll kind of bow that out. Kind of follow the shape of that femur coming down through. And then right along in here is your that shin, basically. And then, so you got higher, lower, higher, lower, um, higher, lower. And the outside, inside is basically higher, lower for your um, calf. And that's going to switch here. It's going to go higher on this inside ankle and then lower on the outside. This is your fibula side of your ankle. This is the tibia side. So this side is actually going to be higher on the inside. So again, we'll kind of make this a little more pronounced. And then over here. Will be a little bit lower then you got your gastronemius right through here and your achilles tendon pop that out and again when in doubt for skinny creatures kind of like a dog leg you can go in here and just really kind of pinch and pull and exaggerate all that and then so there's yeah there's your basic shapes um obviously not a bodacious booty on this guy so We'll stick with the, I keep comparing it to like, <laughs> maybe unfairly, uh, long distance runner body. Um, kind of thin, but still able to get around. So we'll kick this in. And we got the knob of the great trochanter here. And then we got, let me get my my little statue over here so I can see. Pop his arm off here. So, uh, so I can see a little bit better. Let's go ahead and say, get this out of the way. And then right along here, we're gonna have this section here. Let's go ahead and get our clay tubes or our clay buildup. We'll kind of fill in this area here. And this is where your gluteus medius and your gluteus maximus is kind of gonna go through and attach. And obviously there's not a ton of fat and muscle or muscle going along through here. Um, maybe some skin. We'll go back to our Damien standard brush or our dam standard O2. Dam dam standard, Damien standard is comes with ZBrush dam standard O2. I think you'll have to get off the internet. Google that. There we go. And then again, clay build up. Got our hammies in here. Um, again, you got some nice sheaths going along this top here and again on the outside you got you got the uh, you can actually see like the fibula and the 
kind of the, the femur kind of resting on there. There we go. So again, we got this guy blocked out. Let's go up. I think we're ready. We'll do one more subdivision level three. And now we're getting into pretty much dialing in our um, primary and secondary forms. So again, let's take a look at our bat skeleton rib cage. Kind of squatty and kind of a longer pelvis too. So maybe we can kind of, I don't know, use that to our advantage just a tiny bit. Kind of flare this out a little bit here. Weird. And then right through here again, I'm gonna, and, and I don't wanna say like, just do some weird stuff, um, but that's what I'm doing. It's just some weird stuff. Long, aggressive, pointy, creaturey, uh, scapula, developing flight metamorphosis type body here and again we can kind of exaggerate like a membrane through here um, his bicep his deltoid can kind of play a, a role in kind of having this being a little top heavy and then you know thin little emaciated little grabby arms but still you know not not zombie emaciated. Let's go. So while we're doing this, if I'm just pulling across, you'll see uh, I'm getting kind of a dotty stroke. That's where having your lazy mouse on a little bit will help. So just tap L to toggle that back on. And now we can kind of go through here and play around with, again, still, it's, it's generally what you would find. You know, you've got, we talked about the pec here. It kind of goes underneath and folds over and then it's attached to the sternum. Um, and then in through here, uh, also damn standard, just grab that brush here. So we'll go through here and we'll smooth this down a little bit. We still have our smooth turned down quite a bit. And then we'll use our damn standard to kind of dig in. And this will be our deltoid. We can actually kind of maybe carve this back a little bit here. So we can kind of just show that. So here's our deltoid here. And then there's our pec. Oops, running out of space here. I'm using a fairly limited space on my monitor here. We'll move this back a little bit here. There we go. So clay buildup or clay tubes. We'll get this kind of dialed in here. And then right along the sternum here, like the, the Bruce Lee kind of striations we can kind of play with here. And that sternal notch right in here, we can kind of exaggerate and play with. We'll, we'll really give him a very prominent runway model collarbone. And then we'll sweep this back here. Let's figure this out. So this collarbone's gonna, I'm gonna actually pull it up through this way. That sweep. And then over here, this is the, the scapula part. So you can kinda, and actually on this, example you can see the collarbone right there uh, clavicle and then there's your that spine of the scapula over there to your shoulder girdle and then right along the back and then you've got your uh, little deltoid here let's go ahead and tap l to turn off i'm just going to be i'm not going to say it every time i do it but when i'm doing this type of thing i'm going to turn off my lazy radius and then when i want to do long flowing strokes and i'll just turn it back on here And this is where it gets kind of boring because I'm just going through and just adjusting shapes and volumes and primary and secondary forms and a little bit of, probably a little bit of tertiary on subvision level three. So I apologize in advance. And let's have some more coffee. Yeah. I'm getting way behind here. Um, oh, okay. Let me... Uh, Wow, I'm way behind. Sorry about that. Um, cool. Uh, Werewolves and Vampire. Yeah, what, 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 that was a movie. Dark. Dark something? <laughs> I forget. Uh, if you remember, let me know. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, clay brush. Clay tubes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So uh, real quick, what's this one and a half screen? Is it a plugin? No, it's just under transform. There is a split screen. So just turn that to one. And then we have whatever you have selected will be on the right. Whatever you have not selected, but visible will be on the left. Um. <laughs> Seven minute abs. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Uh, coccyx should pop out too. That's a good point. Yeah. So let's go. And um, again, I'm just look back here and we'll swing this around we'll bring our muscles back let's deselect all this stuff here so right in through here let's dial those muscles back yeah just a big bony kind of area back here kind of go through here and again feel free to exaggerate you know anything that kind of makes sense you can even go through here and do like little muscle little weird creaturey muscle attachments in there um, rule of cool doesn't have to be anatomically perfect it's a weird vampire creature rule of cool applies but if you can have some semblance of structure that will kind of read appropriately it'll probably help sell the idea that your creature could exist um, in our world in a hyper realistic fashion so again we'll and you can see these ribs are kind of flat along the top. And as I use my standard brush, it's kind of bubbling them out. So we can we can combat that by starting with just kind of a, a general standard brush stroke. And I probably should turn lazy radius back on while I'm doing these ones in particular. Um, if you're ever in a pinch and you're like, you know, these strokes aren't coming out what how i want you can always just go to the side and just kind of make sure it's like when we're doing our platysma sculpting you can kind of sculpt along here and then just go to the side and make sure that these things flatten like so you don't have to sculpt your way to everything same thing for this if you want to go through there and just get your forms in there and then just dial it back with your move brush um to straighten those out let's turn up our smooth brush just a tiny bit Okay, so we were talking about the ribs. We can also go back in here with our trim dynamic and we can just go back and kind of flatten these out with our trim. And while I'm working and demoing, I'm gonna go in here to preferences, uh, quick save, and I'm gonna say maximum duration. I'm gonna crank that up just so I don't get interrupted. Now that's dangerous to do because if it crashes, then I'm not gonna have a quick save, but I think I'll be okay. Famous last words, I know. So now, uh, through here, normally what I would do is say, okay, here's, uh, let's turn on our polyframe here. This is where the nipple's going to be in that area here. So I'd usually go like, okay, this, this nipple line back is our, where our serratus anterior would come into play. So let's take a look at that. Let's dial this back in and we'll click on here and then we'll dial our muscles out. So from that inside of that scapula all the way over here, connecting to our ribs uh, is where that is and then your external oblique will kind of tuck into those now on an emaciated body you know these are pretty feather thin right and then you've got your lats kind of uh tucking here underneath your armpit so we'll indicate some of that so there's our latissimus dorsi and that's gonna again super thin muscles in this case so we can we can maybe pop this a little, so the lats are going to kind of go across the bottom of that scapula again, up into that armpit there. So maybe right around here-ish, right through here. And then here you can see a little bit of that trapezius through here. So right across the top of that scapula here, down, you can kind of have the trapezius kind of going through there. Um, now, again, you're not going to really have muscles kind of do this shape. It's going to, I mean, you can you can see here it's kind of going to bow out so we're going to get rid of that concavity sorry if my keyboard's being noisy um deal with it i guess those are just my fingers let's also turn down our z intensity quite a bit on this clay tubes that we have our lightly modified clay tubes so here we're going to go through here and take our traps so here we can see our trapezius, the, uh, was that, occipital protuberance of your skull here. Right along here is our traps, and that's going to connect back forward. Back forward? Is that the right term? <laughs> to uh, our clavicle here. And then right along 
our shoulder girdle, our chromium, you know, a little more intensity. Chromium process to the that top part of that spine of the scapula, uh, right along in here. And then it's going to kind of, it's going to do a little twirly right here. And then the fibers, I think, are going to go this way. Something like that. I don't know. So there's our, we're just kind of filling this in. And you can see there's some really, I love these lines through here so we can exaggerate that a bit too. So big knobs of the vertebrae here. And then these nice little spiny little grabbers. And then here is our ribs. And then on top of here is kind of serratus anterior. You can kind of see a little bit of thickness through here. So, you know, you can kind of just make a line through here and then your obliques will kind of tuck into here and then your serratus anterior uh, will go underneath your lats. So it's getting a little bit messy in here, but... And again, you want to work at a lower resolution just so there's fewer verts to pull around. The, high, the more verts you have to push around, the lumpier your sculpt's going to get, you know? So even on organic stuff, certainly on hard surface and clothing, um, you want to get your forms pretty dialed in. Um, and then we got to remember our teres major from our scapula here. So here's our full scapula. Again, our scapula is very long and exaggerated, but we're going to have a volume in here that's going to be our teres major, and that's going to go underneath our tricep. So our tricep's going to be here. And then the other two are a little teres minor right above here. And then our infraspinatus are going to go above, I think. We've, we looked at that, right? So here, yes. Pop the spine out. And again, we can use some friendly help from our move brush. And when I say spine, I mean spine of the scapula, not our vertebrae. And then again, just going back in here. All right, so we're getting some stretched muscles, uh, kind of American werewolf in London. Is that Rob Botin? Or, um, uh, uh, oh, geez, names are escaping me. Um, <laughs> you know, all the, all the people that work on that stuff. Mm. Um, oh, this is going to bug me. God, I can't remember. Um, hey, greetings from South, South Austin. Uh, I lived in Round Rock for quite a bit, actually, up there on, boy, off of 620. <laughs> which is now very crowded. Round Rock and Leander, when I was going to high school, were nothing. Well, Round Rock was always pretty big, but Leander was like a... Leander and Cedar Park were like nothing towns, and now they're gigantic. Um, let me get caught up here. Character creator videos? Yeah, absolutely. But it's fun. Um, yeah, big, big, prominent, curvy clavicle bone, I agree. Let's Let's keep making that more prominent. Uh, of course, for 3D printing and ZBrush, yeah, we I'll get around to that. There's definitely some 3D printing stuff we want to do. Maybe we'll 3D print this guy. Uh, why not? Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, check, update when you'll be offering hard surface for character, hard surface for film at CGMA. Um, when I will be offering it? Never. Those, those aren't my classes. I think Ben Ert, Those are Ben Ert's classes. <laughs> um I guess I could do it, but I, I barely, I don't even have, I do have, I barely have time for the class that I teach on CGMA. So I don't know that anytime soon I'll be doing any hard surface stuff. Um, more UVs flat to get long, even strokes. Oh, good, good call. Yeah. And we do have UV. So if you don't know, you can go down here. Uh, do, do, do. You can morph UV and then keep your bump on a little bit. Then that way you can kind of flatten it out and get those nice even strokes. Good call. Um, yes, over, wait, um, CC4 message, actually, production topology-wise, I wanted to use it for games, retopologize it anyways to make clothes and all that one mesh. 
Uh, if you want to see that process, um, you know, I'll relink everybody here. So here's all. So just for some resources here, here's the ArtStation page, and then here is the YouTube playlist page here that has all the stuff on it. And then the question was... Um, for games, retopologizing, making the clothes. Basically, if you go to, let's do this one here, this character creator pipeline body, this goes through the pipeline of character creator topology for the body, for the face, and then down here is creating clothing, accessories, baking, doing the painter pipeline for the body, doing the paper pipeline, the painter pipeline for the body, the painter pipeline for the accessories. He's all clothed out. Here's a little bit on 3D print posing. Uh, workflows for your character in here. I don't go into like 3D print cleanup and key registration, but you can watch that video. And then, like I said, taking that character in iClone and doing some AccuLips work. Um, uh, mentioned I am the educator. Oh, uh, that's news to me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, no, it's not your fault. I mean, yeah. I, I want to say Ben Ert does the hard surface for character class. But he, again, he could have just done the videos and then they have teachers come in. I have teachers sometimes who do a second set of my class. Um, but yeah, it's not me, unfortunately. Um, two screens, new features, Zebra 24. No, this one's pretty old. It's right here underneath your transform split screen. Just set that to one. Yeah, geez. Yeah, I don't... I, again, I just don't have time to teach more classes than I already got, which is, I think, I, I just teach like a ZBrush for Concept and Ideation class, which I really need to update because three versions of ZBrush have come out since I've updated those videos. Um, we still go over, I guess we can look at those real quick. I don't know how relevant this is, but um, like in the class video list, you know, before you take my class, please go over the week zero basics. That's what's on the this playlist here. If you go to ZBrush What's New, this 51 videos intro to ZBrush, that's essentially this section here. And then all we do is go through ZBrush techniques week two, three, four, five, and six. And then in here, I'll have little blue lines going like, hey, Transpose Master is in your videos. If you wanna see newer videos, check out these links here because I haven't been able to go through and re-record that content because I've been real busy. Okay, so, um, Let's get back to this. So we're on Subdivision Level 3. We have our rib cage popped out. We have nice little lumps and bumps in here that probably have some anatomical significance, but I don't know what it is. And even if I did, I'm going to keep it secret. So we got this here. We have our pectoralis major. And I might skip ahead just to kind of go to a more final version because at this point it does just get just just look at your reference, go gather more reference, and just do uh, cool sculpting stuff. Um, just matching different body types. So we'll hop in, how, all right, about seven o'clock, yeah. We might hop into, you know, capturing some scan data wrinkles. So I might jump forward just a bit. Um, I mean, it's fun talking about anatomy though. So again, we'll go through here again. And we're just refining the volumes we've already put in. So a little bit of the coccyx here, our spinal erectors, we can go through here and give little indications of our vertebrae kind of attaching a little bit to the skin here. And then, like I said, to round out these shapes, just grab your clay tubes brush and then just kind of rock back and forth across this. And you can kind of round these out a little bit here. And then, uh, yeah, the sweep here, just little indications of ribs underneath your skin. Um, this part here... I want to say this volume, it's your lats mostly, but then underneath here is your uh, serratus anterior. So I think both of those working together is uh, my volume's a bit off there, but uh, I think both of those are contributing to that volume, if I had to guess. I need to really re-up my anatomy classes because I'll, I'll do them and I'll remember some of it and then it'll start seeping out of my brain and then I got to go and get caught back up again. 
and I've never really sat down and done because I'll do like huge Miro boards of like software that I'm learning and teaching and stuff like that. And then for anatomy, I just kind of do it and expect to retain it. And of course I don't. So I need to sit down and do a nice big Miro board for myself for all this anatomy stuff. See if that'll cement it and give me a better resource to kind of use. So I got a ton of books and I've looked at them. I've absorbed some of it through osmosis, but that's not super effective, right? Okay, so we got our kind of three main sections of our pec here, our sternum, and then our rib cage section here. And then that's going to tie in here. And then we've got our deltoid over the top, our biceps. Uh, again, we're not, not super muscular, but we can still kind of go through here and cut them up a little bit because... If he was to take flight at any point, not, I mean, this is mostly just for sweet dance moves. He's not going anywhere. There's no wings or membranes here. But again, if it's a metamorphosis genetic mutation turning into a flight vampire, um, we can kind of start nudging him in that direction, basically. So bigger shoulders, um, broader, still light bones, though. So you don't want to make him super heavy because mammals that have to fly are going to have real light bones, right? Little thin little bat bones. But we still want to make him formidable and creepy. In a creepy way, I should say. So here's that olecranon, or our elbow. And then, oh man, why can't I remember this one? That's a major one. There's actually two muscles right along here. Sorry if this is boring as hell, but I'm just, I'm amusing myself. <laughs> uh, these two bad boys um, our brachioradialis duh and then our extemper ex okay this one I don't expect myself to remember extensor carpi radialis longus okay and then these I'm just going to call extensors and then these little little guys here are your flexors so when you flex your hand your flexors you can kind of make a fist and you'll see those kind of pop and then if you wiggle your fingers and kind of tilt them back you can, you can see your extensors kind of kicking in. So, fiddle around with your own body. You can quote me on that one. Michael Pavlovich, ZBrush Live. So here we got some. So this is interesting too. So we've got our humerus that goes down and then we got um, our medial and lateral epicondyles of our humerus and then our olecranon um that actually goes it's uh, so that so it's not the it's the olecranon um <laughs> let's take a look at them bones so this one here is our radius that's going to attach always to the external and then always goes to your thumb whether you're in pronated or supinated and then here is your elbow for your ulna and then down it's always going to be on the pinky side so in our case our hands are kind of folded over so again, this is going to kind of go here to the pinky side. And then our radius is actually going to connect up here always to the X, the lateral, not the medial epicondyle of the humerus, which is kind of in this little notch here or this little recessed area. And that's going to swing over to this side. So then we got our flexors, flexors along the bottom here, and then our extensors along the top. We talked about those two muscles and then these extensors here. So we'll take our damn, damn standard. We'll kind of just, again, I'm, I'm playing it fast and loose. Y'all know that. I always do. And again, we can kind of exaggerate this too. I love this little connection back here. We do have some other reference to I'm going to pull in real quick. And we may even use that scan data to transfer those skin details, which may or may not be overly useful for his texturing since he's going to be kind of our... Our scan guy's kind of leathery skinned in a tan kind of way, which again, not super useful for a vampire that's not supposed to see the sun, but we can, we can play around with it. So here, I'm gonna take this in here. And again, if we wanna exaggerate this too, we can, I forget, what was, did anybody remember the name of the movie that was the werewolves and the vampires and Kate Beckinsale? I guess I could Google it, but I'm busy sculpting, so y'all do that for me. Um, the, I remember there was like a membrane across here that kind of just had a little bit of a wing kind of 
the beginnings of a wing kind of shape. Underworld. Thank you. Yes, that one. Uh, okay, let me get caught up here. Um. <laughs> all right, all right. A cricketer, okay. Um. Gotcha, gotcha. Um. Yeah, I'll check it out. Sorry about that. Um. Yeah, indications of wings, exactly. Kind of heading in that direction. Uh, oh, yeah, and the Midnight Mass. Let me see. Oh, I love that one. Midnight Mass Vampire. Good call. Y'all are so helpful. I should live stream more. You can do some of my work for me. Yes. And he had he had wings kind of on the back. So it wasn't like bat wings were as part of his arms. But that's still cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, oh, and I love that head too yeah 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 there's some good stuff in there um hey john you how's it going man <laughs> uh is this start to shrink the pores will become more open yeah i think so right oh was it i didn't know it was a practical suit yeah i i it, who's the, who's the mike i want to say mike flanagan he did um follow the house of usher and oh uh, Haunted Hill House and Midnight Mass. It's usually the same group of actors-ish. And uh, I don't know. I, over the years, me and my wife have really enjoyed those. So whatever he's whatever he's peddling, I'm buying. Let's put it that way. Uh, so we'll go ahead and dial this in. And yeah, our flexors here. So I think we've gone far enough as far as like just dialing in our primary and secondary forms. Um now we need to do a little bit more work in here. And again, really at the end of the day, all it is is Damien standard to kind of push in forms and then clay buildup or clay tubes to kind of build out forms and make your knobs. And then of course, standard brush, move brush, you know, all the usual suspects. It's not, uh, at least in my case, I don't know. I, I got to go back and rewatch the ZBrush Master stuff. There may have been some I missed too. They may have some more elegant techniques. They're much better sculptors than I am, obviously. So definitely check them out. I tend to keep it pretty simple. And, and I also, if I'm being real honest, I don't do a ton of organic sculpting. I, I think the most organic sculpting I've done is those goblins and trolls. And then this guy uh, recently for my character creator stuff, just to kind of play around with that. But I don't, I'm not generally on the hook for doing a ton of character work. As weird as that is for a director of character art. Or you know what? That's probably not that weird. If you think about it. Um, I should have made... <laughs> I should have made a full transition shift to management. But boy, did I never not do that. Sorry. Um, and also, Damn Standard 02 is a great one. Um, even for secondary forms like this, it kind of push, it pushes in and then kind of pulls out and kind of bubbles out around. So when you're getting through here... I think probably in the next subdivision level is where I'll start using, utilizing that more. Um, but it's still pretty useful along here too. And you know what? We still want to make sure that these things are kind of pulling across. And then let me grab my gluteus reference here. And I'm just kind of looking at a statue I got next to me. My little, um, what is this? Freedom of teach. This thing. Oh. And then, yep, right along here. <clears throat> yada, yada, yada. Okay. Um, and then, again, I would be playing around with these volumes a little bit more, but I'm getting bored of watching myself on a live stream. So I'm going to go up to Southern Level 4, and this is where um, we start getting a little bit more with our uh, damn damn standard 02 is going to start doing a little bit more of the heavy lifting so this is the one where you can kind of go in and again we're kind of playing around with big sheets uh it's it's muscle but it's not rounded workout like um big muscle bellies it's more like sheets of uh muscle and kind of tenderness kind of indications here so but again uh, like like uh, we were talking about in the chat, kind of popping that clavicle, really making that exaggerated. Um, so we'll kind of use our clay tubes here to kind of 
number one, exaggerate the volumes a little bit, but then also going back through here and just kind of brushing over and kind of giving an indication that there's skin, a little bit of fat maybe, uh, your muscle belly underneath here. But again, our muscle bellies aren't super round. They're a little more um, just sheet-like and flat, but still on a very aggressive, exaggerated skeleton that's being, it's like pulling across. And then again, in our deltoid, that is going to connect back to the spine of the scapula here. In our spine of the scapula, we obviously are taking some liberties with here. Um, but it kind of gives a feel of that uncomfortable feeling where he's like, he's uncomfortable in his own anatomy. <laughs> he's being pushed and pulled in directions he's not, he's not digging because his mutation's kind of doing that for him. But again, it is going to kind of, it'll connect back here, but it'll kind of flatten out and then the belly will kick in a little bit later is what I'm trying to indicate here. So, uh, yeah, so here's your multi-pennant uh, part of your deltoid here. And then again, just going back in with your um, damn standard O2 and just kind of carving in a little bit and then smoothing out. Let's turn down our smooth brush just a tiny bit here. And then this is also where you can kind of start going in here and playing around with. Now, some of the stuff, when you start getting to this level, I want to kind of be careful that if it is going to be like skin direction stuff, I don't start that too early. I wait until I get into subdivision five or probably six. Um, so I'm still trying to think about just these are tertiary forms for volumes, but not tertiary forms for pore or skin detail, if I can help it. Um, because those, if I do it too early on too low res of a geometry, I'm going to have to go back over it and clean it up, and that's just going to waste more time than it's worth. So, uh, but I can start indicating, you know, big, big form, big volume changes. This is kind of like leathery skin meets uh, underlying pec muscle here. So, yeah, and then we'll maybe we'll do a. So at the manubrium of your sternum is usually where you'll have a bit of a. Um, dividing line in your pec here so you can you can put a nice big you can comfortably and accurately put a nice big uh, striation in your pec muscle there but anyway uh, and that's about it just kind of keep sculpting I'm going to load up oh here's another thing too we'll maybe even pop in some more reference we'll turn him off we'll turn this guy on and now we can kind of look at, ooh, and I love this right here, that deltoid that kind of swings underneath. So we can kind of use that here. So we can kind of go through here and we'll use our damn sand. And if you need to, it's like, hey, you know what? I'm a little too, too high res. Let's drop back down and then we can kind of work here. So we'll kind of just look at this. Be like, okay, here's a little deltoid in here. And then we'll kind of sink this in and carve this out and move this down a little bit here yeah and again i don't necessarily want to go through here and start dialing in like veins at this level maybe subdivision level four um and then as i say that i'm actually going in here and adding veins that's also something else you can wait until you transfer your scan data if you are going to end up just transferring scan data detail you can just hold off on that and then go in and exaggerate that um i also like this that little you can kind of see the the humerus underneath. Ah, oh, how cool is that? Right underneath there, and then they. So you can kind of maybe steal a little bit of that. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let me do this. Let me go to file open. Let me see if I can find. Hmm. Vampire body, face tools, body, pre wrap transfer. Okay, let me get caught up. His butt is too roundy. Well, let's see how we... Okay, so that's the pre-wrap transfer. Let me try... Give me a second. Let's see where we ended up. <laughs> Ooh, this is a big file. And let's hold on, Control, Shift, and Tap. There we go. 
And on this one, that's already been wrapped. Damn, that's okay. So back to this, let's switch over to metallic. Let's turn that on. And this one, let's turn that off. There we go. So yeah, that's pretty pretty much what we had, right? This one's a little bit more fidelity. And these are, again, just honestly, just mostly secondary forms. So, you know, I didn't take it to the poor level of detail or anything like that, but we got everything basically dialed in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this scan wrapped here and we'll just go through this process real quick. Uh, we don't need this anymore, this reference. We'll go ahead and delete that out of our scene and we'll go out of split screen. So we'll take a quick look. We got some veins going through here. This is basically just, we're on subdivision level, eh, I would say, Level four is probably where I'd be putting this stuff in. Um, big, ropey uh, veins through here, and then maybe some cross. Yeah, that's about, again, nothing major. Just dialing in the forms a little bit tighter. He's still a little bit lumpy, but that's okay. Forgive me. So now... Let's say I wanted to transfer some scan data to this character. So I'm going to go in here, if I remember how to do this. Let's go to Load Tool. Let me bring in... This guy. So this is a 1024 scan data. It might take a second. Oh, we might have, yeah, I have a sim right here. So I'm going to say delete other, and then we're going to say append him to our subtool stack, and then we're going to delete them out of there. And then with him selected, he's going to be pretty tiny. So I'm going to hit uh, F to frame him, hit W, his gizmo is kind of wonky. I'm going to turn off X symmetry, hold down Alt, reset this, and then go to unmatch mesh center, hold down Alt, put it down here at the bottom of his feet. And then we're going to go up to subdivision level six, Give him a second to load in the memory here. There we go. Three, four, five, six. And then I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go crazy, uh, making him huge all of a sudden. I'm gonna go slow. This is this might be more, what's the word? Um, my brain's already starting to go, and the day hasn't even started yet. But yeah, that's when you know it's gonna be a fun day. Um, the word I'm looking for is, I'm I'm nervous. Basically, if I scale too fast, sometimes what can happen, if you like go to Deformation Unify, for example, you can lose your high frequency detail. So what I tend to do is go to the highest. You can, if you want to be really safe, you can even delete lower, scale them up, and then reconstruct subdivision history. I've found that just not quite scaling him super fast, but just kind of going slow and not maxing out the scale has managed to keep all this detail because we're gonna we're gonna wrap this so we've scaled them up uh we got our guy here i'm gonna go down here i'm gonna turn off this texture temporarily and we got him in place now he has a lot of the this is like tertiary wrinkle information right so i'm going to transfer that to my topology and bake that out um so let's do that so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back down to subdivision level one and I can, I'm can i gonna use a program called RAP uh, 2023. That doesn't mean though that I have to be like, okay, I'm just gonna start plotting points and move this stuff back. You can go through here and we'll turn on X symmetry again. I'm actually gonna do this too while I'm thinking about it. I'm going to turn off X symmetry even though I just turned it back on. I'm gonna mask half of him because again, I'm just transferring detail. I'm not. I'm not like, oh, I'm gonna get some of his asymmetry in there. I don't care about that. I'm gonna go in here to deformation, um, smart resim across the x-axis, and then I'm gonna go up one. There we go. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. There we go. Um, just for the primary, like primary and secondary volumes, I'm going to make sure those are symmetrical. So when I'm plotting points, because what can happen in wrap is you'll be on the left side and I want to do both sides at the same time to save me some time. Um, but if the points aren't where they should be, it'll just leave them out and then, then you'll find yourself in a bad state. So that's all I'm doing there. This guy should already be symmetrical. Uh, also, if I want to, I can drop back down to subdivision level one on this guy, on our scan data, I should say. 
and we'll go into transparency mode. Uh, we can even use our anchor brushes. So we'll tap X. We'll go in here and we'll say uh, B A B A N is our anchor brush. Tap here, tap here, and we can just go through. Oops, I still have it on inflate. Put that on a rotate. Hmm. Rotate. Oh, I have my focal shift still set at zero. <laughs> set that to 100. Uh, we were discussing. Um, let me be a little more careful with this one. There we go. And again, I don't even have to be that accurate. It just has to be moving these things a little bit more into place. And in fact, I can even go through here. Uh, if you don't, you can you can also go in here and say, um, hold down control. So if we hit W, we can hold down control. We can drag down our model and it seems to be having an issue for some reason, but you can usually mask along here while you drag. And in fact, if you're holding down control and dragging and let go of control in ZBrush 2024, it should snap to the middle of the model. It's not doing that right now, but I'm just gonna go in here, hold down control with my mask lasso. We can hold down control and tap to blur that out, tap to invert that. And then now we can just kind of set our gizmo in here and I can say, cause it looks like our forearm's quite a bit shorter. So we can just kind of, we'll turn on L sim with dynamic off and that'll be our local symmetry here. Um, yeah, there's something weird going on with his poly groups and I don't know, something not being right. And in fact, since we're on subdivision level one, and you don't have to do this part, wrap should take care of, will take care of all this for us. I'm just making it so when you go to plot points, it'll be a little bit closer. Because all I'm really grabbing is skin detail. But I'm taking away, I'm going to try to take away some of that ambiguity. Let's turn off our ghosts. And you don't even have to use wrap if you don't want to. You can do it manually in ZBrush, but it'll just take a little bit longer. You have to be a little bit more careful. Alrighty, and then we'll go in here with our inflate brush, hold down alt, and we'll kind of move these points around a little bit. And I might need to pull up some instructions because I don't know that I remember it off the top of my head. Okay, so body, text, body texturing using scan data. And I'm basically just going through this here, so I'll just copy this link to y'all. You can check that out from the Scan Store YouTube channel. So essentially, we're going to um, unify, take the body mount of the lowest subdivision level exporter's OBJ file. So if I go into solo mode here, this selected subtool we're going to export as an OBJ file. So we're going to say export. We'll just throw this right in our desktop as scan body. And then we'll go back to our base body here. Uh, this is at 899,000. I'm going to drop this down to subdivision level three. I think that's that'll be plenty. And then we can export this as our sculpts. And in fact, if you want to, you can say, you know, duplicate this off. You can go in here to Z decimation master preprocess current. Um, oops, yeah, I'll bake all layers. That was handy. And then we can go down here, we can say, you know, drop this down to whatever 180 decimate current. So now we got a simplified mesh that we duplicated off. We can go in here and export, and we'll call this on our desktop sculpt body. Oh, I already have it loaded up. So we'll go in here to wrap. File, recent, we'll use our goblin file. So I have to set up the node structure again. So here is our base. Uh, you can just go in here, right click, load, save, load geometry node. I'm gonna go in here and this is our base here. So we're gonna go to our desktop and we'll say scan body. 
And then for our sculpts, we'll go in here and we'll grab our, that again, our desktop sculpt. There we go. Um, we'll select polygons that we don't want to move around. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to hide our other body here. So in here, I'm going to say uh, under select polygons for our base, I don't want to, let's go ahead and select polygons, clear. Can I viewport, viewport 3D, select polygons, clear. Hmm. Maybe our select points? No. Our base, yes. Yes. Hmm. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with point pairs. I'll do that in a second. So here we have point pairs. I'm going to say symmetry. Uh, across the x-axis for the left geometry and the right geometry. We'll go in here to our visual editor. There we go. And I'm on this one. I'm going to say clear all. And now let's see if we can go back. There we go. We can select polygons. It's already selected poly groups. I'm just going to clear those. That's our display. Okay. I don't know what that was, but so I can go through here and I can select, I'm just going to go into the back of the eyeball here and just select this row and then same thing on this side. And then we're going to go around to the inside of the head here and we're going to select the inside over of this mouth bag here. And these are basically, I'm telling it, whatever I have selected in here, don't bother trying to snap to any geometry that I have. So now that we have those, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say, there we go, everything's working. Grow, 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 and then shrink back down. Uh, you can clean up these selections if you want, but I think that's good enough. And then now we'll go to select point pairs and we're just gonna go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So we do have X symmetry turned on. Actually, now that I think about it, um, let's go back into ZBrush here. I don't want the eyelashes included with this. So I should have decimated it down without it, but that's easy enough to fix. I'm gonna go in here and say auto groups, control shift tap, the body here, geometry modified topology, delete hidden on our duplicate. We'll re-export this back out onto our desktop as our sculpt body. And then we don't need this in our file anymore. We'll just delete that out of our scene. Yeah, this poly group is causing problems I think with selection. Back in here, we'll say Sculpt, Reload, Select Point Pairs, there we go. So now we're just gonna go through here and we'll say, you know, here's one and it's selecting two on the other side and then we'll go exact same thing, one, two on the other side. <laughs> oh, there we go. Be careful that you don't lose that parity because you definitely don't want these things going all over. So I'm not gonna bother doing all of this, but this is essentially, what you're doing is you're just going through here and you're clicking and we're going to wrap the entire body here. So, um, oh, you know, I should have moved the ears around too, but that's okay. So here, 13, 13, 15, 15. And you're just keeping an eyeball on that number because if it ever gets out of sync, you're gonna have to go through and fix it. So this ear is a little bit different. Everything seems to be generally working. Uh, since we have symmetry on, I'm not going to go down the middle just yet, but essentially just, yeah, there's the curve of that nose. Uh, we want to keep those the same on the mouth here, the corners of the lips here, and then this is the border of the lip we want to wrap here, et cetera, et cetera. So go through that, do all of your plot points, and then you'll hit the, you'll go back down here to wrapping. You'll hit um, compute. I guess I didn't finish that thought there. 31, oh, I need to go over here. 31, 31, now they both match. So now when I go down here wrapping, I can hit compute and it'll go through and basically wrap my scan here 
to my body. Now I didn't plot all the points, so it's just doing a lot of guesswork here. So the more points you plot, the better job it's going to do. Um, it seems to be doing a fair job without me doing toes and fingers. So, you know, I'm just gonna let this go and get caught up. Um, cool. Mm. Dr. Sleep is, uh, whenever I'm not in the mood to watch The Shining, I'll go watch Dr. Sleep. It, it scratches that itch for me. <laughs> um, do you watch a stream again after you finish the live? Never. I hate watching myself live stream. <laughs> um, average time we should put in to perfect the anatomy. Um, usually I just time box. Like how much time do I have for this character? Okay, that's the amount of time I'm going to spend. Um, so you can spend a couple hours, which is what I usually do. Um, like literally I spent a couple, literally it was a couple hours doing the anatomy for that character. Um, but obviously you can spend weeks making it perfect. Jonas, how's it going, man? Uh, if you, hey, you, speaking of CGMA and hard surface modeling, uh, you would be a great instructor for that class. Uh, if, if y'all don't know. This here, I'll link y'all to this here. Here's a excellent tutorial on some hard surface ZBrush sculpting. I'll link this here. Um, check this one out. Uh, yeah, this is like super free form, just kind of letting the aesthetics dictate. All It's basically like the cool part of modeling. Uh, modeling like this is so cool. That's one of my favorite things. So, uh-oh, something went wrong with the page. I'm gonna reload. Anything that was said, I'm gonna lose. So... There we go. Okay. I think it came back. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So we went through and we basically it snapped the geometry for us. I didn't have to plot that many points and it did a damn good job. I, thank you, Rap. So we can go down here to our brush. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reset this brush here. And then we can use the clone brush. Any areas it didn't... Oh, you know, I should have really gone through and plotted points for the nose to get the nostrils to kind of flare out. But um, basically, you can go through and use a clone brush and clean up any of these areas that aren't great. And then you'll go in here and you'll say accept, right click, save geometry. We'll go ahead and save over our, uh, on our desktop here, we have our scan body. We'll do scan wrapped. That makes sense, right? Save. And then when we go back into ZBrush, we have our body here. All we got to do is import our scan wrapped OBJ that'll move those points around. And then when we go through here and we update or go through our subdivision levels, we now have our, wait for it. We now have our scan data character that fits our body with all that detail. And we're gonna transfer that over to our other um, object here. So I'm gonna do a quick, hold on just a second here. <laughs> Wait for it. This one's going to be a little bit more accurate. But that's the basic process. And then let's see what the next part is. Um, blah, blah, blah. Opacity slider. Apply. ZBrush. Lowest. Store a morph target on the highest level of your model. So, again, we need to hold down Control Shift and tap. There we go. So, here is our scan data. that's been wrapped uh, and, and transferred, it looks like. Uh, if I go down here, so again, this this is our scan geometry. This isn't our CC topology. This is our 1024 topology. If I go in here and I say texture map, and damn, it's not in here. Uh, it should be, though. I can steal it. Clone texture. <laughs> so if I go in here and I go to his texture map, which will be plugged in here, um, you'll see not only does our, this is again, this is our scan model. Um, here's the texture map applied to our scan model. You can see our, our labial fold. We kind of missed that mark a little bit, but it's basically our scan data moved 
points positions have been moved. So our old man has now been turned into our vampire creature, at least primary and secondary forms. And then he's carrying all that tertiary detail. So I can transfer this detail to my polygons. I can go in here to uh, poly paint from texture. We'll turn on RGB, make sure it's at 100. Poly paint from texture. We'll turn RGB off. It automatically turned our texture off. So we can go ahead and just get rid of that. So now we're looking at our poly paint here. Um, so at the very top, uh, and we didn't have to do that at that point, but uh, let's see. Store morph target on the highest level of your model. So we're going to go down here to our morph target. We're going to say store a morph target at subdivision level 6 for this character. We'll turn off colorize here. So we stored a morph target. And then smooth all the details off your mesh. You can also, so you can hold down shift. Let's turn on X symmetry here. We're going to, let's go ahead and bake all these layers, I guess. I don't know what, oh, we already have this done. Um, let's say bake all. So we're going to hold down shift and we're going to smooth out all the details. And the reason we're doing this, you can also hold down, um, let's see, BC brush contrast target. So you can hold down alt. That didn't work. BC brush contrast target. Hold down Alt with this brush, and that will actually do a, a nice smooth. That'll get rid of all your detail. So basically, what you're doing is you're getting rid of all the high frequency detail. Um, and we stored a morph target. So we're going to smooth all of this out, or you can just hold down Shift and smooth. Let's turn our Z intensity up to 100 holding down shift and then again underneath our brush here under smooth brush modifiers change your weighted smooth mode to one and that'll go ahead and again we're just getting rid of all of our high frequency detail like so and then once we're done doing that and i'm just going to do this super quickly if i can because again you guys don't need to see the in fact i'm going to cheat this a little bit here let's say this is our highest just to make this go a little bit faster. So we're smoothing off our detail. And then we're going to create a new layer called skin details. It's recording. So we're going to go to the morph. Oh, I recorded it at six. <laughs> you should be able to hit the switch icon. That'll bring your high frequency detail back on a layer that you can just turn off. So I'll show you that. Sorry. I was trying to do things faster and it backfired on me. These are big files, so that's why it's taking a while. So again, we smoothed it out, we hit morph switch, and now I have uh, all the skin details. So here's our smooth body, and then when I turn this back on, we now have a layer with our skin details in it here. And then we're going to turn this off. We're going to drop down to subdivision level two. We have, we don't need this anymore. We have our base body sculpt here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this colorize off. So here's our base body sculpt. Um, the scan wrapped probably isn't going to have all this detail. So what you would have to do is I'm going to go to my base body here. We're going to hold down control, tap to store those in history, go to our scan wrapped, uh, go to B, H, grab history recall brush, turn off X symmetry, and just go through here. And it'll probably, like I said, it'll probably look like this. You're gonna go through with your history recall brush and step through your subdivision levels and just match your scan to your primary and secondary and tertiary forms uh, for your model here. So like I said, your scan will end up looking like this probably when it comes in. You're just gonna go through here, subdivision level two, you'll match 
your volumes and then you'll step up to subdivision level three like this and match your volumes here and then step up to subdivision level four. Um, and then once you get to a certain point, you can start holding that control shift and, you know, making polygroup selections and doing project all or in our case, project history to go through. And you're just basically projecting more of the scan wrap to your uh, model forms. And then when you're done doing that, we can go all the way up to subdivision level six. And then we can just, at, at this point, if you're not using the CC topology, you can just go through here and say, hey, I'm gonna use the 1024 topology and here's all of my detail. I've got the primary and secondary forms from my vampire and now I have all of my, you know, poor level detail dialed in on my face. You know, and then you can go in and modify that obviously because it's not gonna be perfect, but at least you have a start on, you know, different types of skin wrinkles that have been applied to your hands and your feet and your body and stuff like that. But our problem is we have that on this model, but I want it on my CC topology. So we've already transferred our texture map to our poly paint on this one. So we'll go ahead and switch over to our skin shader four. And then if we go here to our base body, if I want to transfer that detail, I'm going to go back to my scan wrapped. We're going to hold down control and tap the latest point in history on this one. I think this is what I did. And then we're going to do, let's go into polyframe mode. Um, I only want to project the base body parts, right? So I'm going to hold down control shift. We're going to say, grab this head part here. And then the eyes, actually it might be easier. Um, nah, the mouth bag's kind of hard to get to. So control shift tap. We're going to grab all of the relevant pieces. We don't want the inner eye socket being projected. We don't want the eyelashes being projected. We don't want the mouth bag being projected. We, and I don't want the nails even being projected. I just want the base body parts here. Perfect. So I'll control shift drag um, here and then Yeah, I don't think that'll matter. Uh, so we've stored that in history. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say project history with geometry and color. We're at subdivision level six. And we're going to, this is going to transfer all of that high frequency, poor detail and the texture map to our character here. Whew. Sure, no problem. Thank you, Jonas. I, uh, I really did enjoy that. Normally, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't bring it up, but um, I really, really did enjoy when I went through and did uh, that tutorial you made. It was awesome. You create environments too. I'm looking for tutorials to do landscapes. Um, oh man, if you're into like Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine has some awesome, um, look up Unreal Sensei. He has some free YouTube videos that'll take you through like landscape brushes and then um, putting in foliage and grabbing mega scan data. You can do some really, really fun um, awesome, high fidelity, crazy awesome environments using that. So that's what I would use. Um, cool, cool. Yeah, let me actually... I'll get you a link. Yeah, UE5 Unreal Engine 5 beginner tutorial. I want to say one of these moments. It's like five hours long. The 2022 one is what you want to use i think so this this goes through literally step by step loading up the engine going through what are materials how do they work tiling uh gi lumen landscape um foliage mega scans nanite <laughs> uh all of it and then you go through and you create cliffs i think even water and trees and a lot of the stuff too he's going to see like oh this is foliage problem and shearing and tearing problems blah blah, blah. all that's been fixed in 5.3 i believe so put make building your own castles from the castle kit so like yeah this is this is great just for kind of getting in there and doing unreal environments yeah so uh okay so now, if I hold down Control Shift, 
and tap. Oh, this is still the old one, isn't it? You know what? I wonder, because I have an untitled layer, uh, I'm going to say bake all on that. There we go. I had a weird layer that was doing some weird stuff. So we've transferred uh, that. If there is some transfer errors, you can go back again to BHR, History Recall Brush, uh, turn off X symmetry. Uh, we can turn off RGB. We can just use Z sub on this one. And we can just go through here and we can fix, you know, some of these little knobs that don't quite get projected as much. You can also play with your projection level. But essentially, this is what we have now. Where are we doing on time? Oh, perfect. So we've transferred our scan wrapped to our base body here. Let me go in here. We'll just, we'll just go ahead and finish this out. We're close. So, um, so basically what I would do, and again, I'm going to have a whole series on this. I have it recorded. I just need to go in and edit it and do the thumbnails and the marketing and the sizzle videos and then uploading it and blah, 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 all the, all the stuff that goes into content that's not overly fun. But keep your eyes peeled for this. That'll take you through the whole process. But what I'm basically waiting for is this to open. So the scan wrapped, we don't need anymore. And then if I hold down shift and turn all these on, we can now transfer all of this, the at least the body data back over to our character creator file. So let me just open that real quick. Oh, you know what? We should open the 001 body because that'll be more accurate. Ignore this. Ignore that. Um, this is what we would see. Not that yet. We'll see that in just a second. All goopy and creepy and bony <laughs> and subsurface scattery. Wait for it. There we go. So let's go here. Motion, pose, a pose. So this is what we had starting this whole process was we had our face tools head uh, that had all of our custom blend shapes here. So if we go in here, let's just check this out real quick. Wrinkle check, dramatic male. And again, if you're, you're like, what the hell are you talking about? This is all under this character creator pipeline. Actually, it's not. We haven't even done the face tool stuff yet. Um, I do have a live stream on it though. YouTube playlists. Uh, live. Right here, this one, Character Creator Face Tools ZBrush. You can go through and I talk about literally creating this vampire head and then setting it up and doing custom uh, blend shapes using ZBrush to go through and basically get this head bespoke. Um, expression wrinkles that get dialed in, all of these expression wrinkles and the platysma, you know, this little, these little um, tendony neck parts here is all custom from my head actually. There we go. There we go. That'll come in. So his his head's working. His body just isn't caught up, right? Uh, and all of that was taken from, or at least borrowed from, recording character creator face tool, pav face. That's me. Expression reference. So for example, um, you know, brow raise. I've got some 4K reference here. Let's see. Video full screen. Nope. I want to do video voice fit. There we go. So you can see as my brow goes up, all the little compressed wrinkles and the skin folds that end up happening. Um, so I got a bunch. I got reference of basically all the different shapes. I think there's 13 shapes we can play around with ZBrush with face tools. And again, those videos are coming soon. Okay, so motion, pose, a pose. So all we've done a lot of work since then. We've got a whole body going, right? So here's our base body. Here, we're going to send this all back. So we're going to go Z all back to character creator. And we're going to say update current pose. <laughs> and in fact, while that's going, I'm going to be opening up Substance 3D Painter in the background because we're going to transfer. We're going to bake all of our normals and all of our skin detail and texture it and then bring that into uh, character creator. So now we've got a new body, but we still have his nice normal map. Uh, on his body, if we go in here to the material, we say um, 
skin body if we hover over this normal map. It, this is not our normal map, right? It would have ribs and bony protrusions. This is just a nice muscular body. And obviously the skin hasn't been updated. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say uh, Substance Painter, export character to Substance Painter. And we're going to just throw this on our desktop. Actually, we'll put it in a folder called... Um, what are we doing? In the live stream demo folder, I'll call this um, demo body low OBJ. And actually, before I did that, there's one thing I need to do. Sometimes it gets crashy. If uh, it should go pretty fast, but occasionally, if I just open up Character Creator, send it over, and do this, sometimes it'll get crashy on export for some reason. I'll let that see if I can finish that out. Um, use to X normals. I don't know which one you used. I transferred our texture from. Let's load this back up real quick. Um, we took scan data and wrap 2023. Um, import animation. You can. Can you import this animation face in 3D Studio Max or Maya or Blender? Yes, you can just export. Um, export as FBX, uh, and it'll take your Alembic, ca your basically it'll take all of your animation, all the revert vertex animation, and just put it into a file. Okay, file. Here. ZBrush. This we don't need. And we do have Substance Painter, so I'm going to say... Uh, actually, so let's say that exported correctly. I'm going to go in here to File, New, and I'm going to grab that file here. We'll say this is body low, and I'll show you when, when that file opens. I'll show you the one thing I did before I actually exported. Okay, there we go. So again, motion, pose, A pose. I'm gonna go in here to edit facial. And this is actually pretty cool too. So if you haven't played around with this, you can go in here and you can like, grab the eyeballs and move them around. And you can go through here and so for example, you can open our jaw. And we're gonna open the jaw before we send this to painter so we don't get normal map baking errors. Uh, but you can like move you know, the head around. And then if I open the jaw, oops, here, you can see just like in real life, when you take your jaw and you kind of move it to the left and the right, it'll kind of pop your, your platysma out there. So that's all kind of baked in there. So we'll go in here to reset to zero. Um, so anyway, like I said, go in here to modify jaw open 50. Uh, and then you would just say, go Z this back to ZBrush. That would open up his mouth you're gonna to go to subdivision level. I mean, it'll be on subdivision level six. His mouth will be open. Go in here to export. I'm not gonna do it now because it's gonna to take too long sitting here for minutes waiting for it to export. You'll export this in an FBX. So then when you come in here, you'll have your low res body. This will be in the UDIM workflow. So I'm gonna go through here. Uh, I'm gonna turn off. And again, I'm gonna have videos on all this. So don't feel like you need to understand what's going on. Just give me a few days to get it up loaded. Um, so all of this, we can go ahead and just turn off. All we're doing is body baking. Oh, you know what? I can just hold down control alt, tap the body, go in here to, to just have this showing, basically the body. And then we're gonna go into texture settings here. We're gonna say bake mesh maps. We're gonna load in our high res. And then while this is going, we're going to do a 2048 bake. That's going to be 2048 for each UDIM, which is going to be head, body, arms, legs. We're going to skip the nails and the eyelashes because that's built into the body here. So here we'll turn everything off except for our head. And then the last two UDIMs are nails and eyelashes. So we've got our high res loaded in. Our ID map, we're going to switch over to vertex color. Common settings, blah, blah, blah. So we'll say bake. And that's going to bake us a new body normal map and a new head. 
So let's go, while this is working, I'm gonna go back to character creator. We'll get this guy set up. Pose, a pose. Okay, got rid of that, perfect. We are gonna update this. We're gonna say everything's showing, go Z all. I know this is very disjointed, but bear with me. It'll make more sense once I have my videos edited. So we're going to update his body so we've got the nice bony, straggly, scraggly vampire body, but we just need to update his textures. Luckily, uh, character creator makes that very, painter makes that very easy for us. So we'll say return to painting mode. There we go. So we have our body in here. Uh, just a real quick overview. If I go in here and do a fill layer, I can make a fill layer on that fill layer, in that fill layer. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna type in project. Project. We're going to drag our color map into. Now, this is weird. If I go in here and drag this color map into this fill layer and say base color, it's going to not do my UDIM fill. Uh, however, if I have a fill layer in here and I scroll down and I drag it into this base color, that will drag my four texture maps into the right spots here. And the reason I do is it a fill layer. Let's go ahead and turn off these material properties here is so I can, on top of this fill layer, I can right click, I can add a filter, and I can put like a hue saturation uh, on here. So I can like hue shift it a little bit. I can go in here and saturate it and desaturate it, uh, do contrast or levels on top of that as a base skin. Now I do have, let me get my smart materials here. Give it a second, there we go. I do have a smart material vampire skin. Let's delete that, let's delete that, and we'll just step through here. Let's grab all this out of that. This is, again, I'm just kind of fast tracking for demo because we only got eight minutes left. Um, so let's step through here. So number one, uh, at the very bottom, I do have my base skin just sitting here as is. Um, on here, we have our base color. This is our fill layer with a little bit of a levels. It's not doing a whole lot. And then I'd have a little bit of saturation added to my base skin. On top of that, I have a cavity fill. So for, so for this fill layer, I dragged in my... Curvature map. So I took my... Come on, load it up. There we go. I dragged my curvature map into this fill layer. And then, in fact, we can probably set that to normal. Eh. That's fine. We set it to subtractive. This is going to give us a kind of a kind of a mummy skin type of look here. So here we have our curvature map on here. Uh, you can see it's kind of giving us a dried out kind of leathery mummy skin. And then we did a little bit of levels. We put a gradient filter on here so that the dark parts of the curvature map are dark blue. And then the gray parts are purple. And then the white parts are kind of pinkish. And then we did an HSL. Uh, adjustment on there and then on top of here we did a like a kind of a skin punch where we kind of made it a little more dead a little more gray in the recesses same kind of deal cavity map a little bit of levels gradient this time you know swapped out these colors uh hue shifted it just a tad and then that's basically our body skin we did a little bit of roughness work so on the roughness on this roughness this is again that curvature map in here with a little bit of levels uh, I think inverted, maybe, so that it's a little bit of, it's just a little bit of skin breakup. And then on top of that, we have a, a multiply of a grunge leak, like a heavy leaky grunge on top of here, tiled a bit, just to kind of get some sweaty roughness multiplied on there. So if I hit M on my keyboard, that is the end result of our kind of vampire-y skin. Um, and then the only the only bad thing about this workflow, and it's kind of hard to explain. Let's see if I can do it. Essentially, if you did this body workflow, this goblin body workflow, where essentially we start with the body, we take it through this exact same process, but we do the body and the head, the base body and the base head uh, up to a certain point. Let me skip forward a little bit. There we go. So we're going through, we're doing the exact same process, but we haven't done face tools yet. We're just sculpting the base body and the base head, and we're transferring that data back 
into Character Creator. After this point, then if you do face tools, you're good to go. However, what we ended up doing was for this vampire, we did face tools first, which left us in a state that we're in now, which is we have our character, we have our face tools head all done, but then we got a body. So we're kind of doing it at a backwards workflow, but it's possible to do. So we've gone through and we've textured this. So I'm gonna go in here to file, export textures. Uh, we're gonna choose where this needs to go. We're going to say um, our output template is going to be character creator. That's a template you can download if you wanna know more about that. You can go and check out, again, this body workflow. That'll walk you through and give you links to where to download this substance template file. Uh, we'll say PNG 2048. And again, we need to show this where to go. So well, this will be on our desktop. Vampire body. Nope. Vampire bake. It's going to be under the standard skin head. So it's going to be this folder. Now, before I export... There is something I'm going to do. Bear with me. So right now, all of this would be Kevin's textures, all UDIMs one through four. I'm gonna delete those out of here and then we're just gonna leave the nails and eyelashes alone. So when we go in here and we say file, export textures, we're gonna say all of this is dialed in. There's one more thing we do need to do though. Um, we're not gonna export any of this. We're only gonna export the standard skin head. And even on the standard skin head, we're not gonna export over five in the UDIM six. So with all those set up, we can say export our textures, and then that's gonna populate, um, oops, sorry. There's one thing I need to do, ah, sorry. File, export textures, you need to look in the right directory. Um, we need to be out where we can see the folder before uh, outside of the deep folders here. So we'll select this folder, hit export, and that will export all of the new textures into this folder. And now when I go into Character Creator, I can say, update textures from Substance Painter. I can point it. Now I'm gonna dive in here so I can see the folders, select that folder, and that'll go through and take all of those textures, plug it into the materials for all the body parts, and that'll update him, yay. So now if I go in here, let's go in here to content, stage, Lightroom, authority, um, perform, dance turn. We'll go ahead and lock him into place here. Hit play. There we go. He's all nice and creepy. And uh, yeah, he's doing his thing. So uh, let's see, motion, male, walk. So he's got his creepy skin. He's got uh, his face tools, still works. In fact, if we do kind of a, that demure, spin around. We get to see all his creepy anatomy updated with all the skin textures there. Uh, and of course, perform a wrinkle check. Now he has facial animation with our face tools, blend shapes with the updated body that we sculpted in ZBrush, transfer the poly paint, transfer the skin details. And now he has his little uh, grimy, uh, creepy body along with that head. We did it. Um, just in time, one minute to spare. Uh, ornament sculpted around the face, a separate mesh is a way I could deform it according to the expressions. Yes, you would bring that in. If I stop this motion, pose, a pose. When you bring in clothing and accessories, let me stop this. And again, that's in this playlist here this uh, creation clothing and accessories instead of, for example, he's got boxers on. Um, you would say, so if you had, if you, this was an accessory, you could say uh, transfer skin weight. So it would transfer the body to the accessory and turn it into clothing. You would do the exact same thing. Let's convert this to accessory. 
and then you would say create so have any facial ornamentation that you have and say create hair brows or beard so wherever that ornamentation is pick one wherever whatever zone of the face it's in hit this and then it would transfer the weights from the face shapes to uh, whatever ornamentation you have on the face um, wrap 23 being used in games or pipeline or should be studying details by hand um, I mean I I can't speak for the entire games industry, so it kind of depends on where you work, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, like, just like Will says both, you know, uh, here's the thing is you have, you'll have purists that are like, you should only start every production model from a sphere. Do that. You will be an amazing uh, body sculptor. I will say as a character artist for 15 years, the amount of bodies that I've had to sculpt for production is right around zero. That's always done by the leads and the tech rigging team. And that's about it. Usually as a character artist, you're doing gear, you know, because more than you need characters, you need shirts, pants, boots, shoulder pads. <laughs> Rarely, I haven't worked on a game ever in my life where a bunch of anatomy sculpting has been needed. Fortunately or unfortunately. But as a character artist, start from a sphere and just sculpt the hell out of it. Really learn anatomy and... You know, and then re and re apologize it all by hand if you want to. That's tedious, but it's good to good information. Good to have. Um, cool, cool, excellent. Thanks, everybody. I'm gonna head out. Sorry if I missed anything. Uh, there's a lot of comments came in as I was doing that tedious stuff. But anyway, that's the basic flow. And now we have. And again, I'm gonna have all of this uh, in a nice bite-sized more linear format in just a bit so keep an eye smash that like and subscribe button uh you know the drill and again for those resources there's that playlist and then um art station here and remember i do have it organized now so if you're looking for zbrush stuff zbrush what's new intro to zbrush all the new what's new features here's the cal the character creator stuff um workflows here's all my live streams that are on my art station page and then any presentations that I've done will be in here. There's ZBrush Summit. Cool. Um, normally, I would say I would be streaming on my channel on Thursday. I've been really bad about that, so I'm not going to promise I'll be there. So next month, same bat time, same bat channel. We'll call it that. Cool. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to head on out.